The Hungarian Revolution of 1848 was one of the many European revolutions of 1848 and closely linked to other revolutions of 1848 in the Habsburg areas. The revolution in the Kingdom of Hungary grew into a war for independence from the Austrian Empire, ruled by the Habsburg dynasty. After a series of serious Austrian defeats in 1849, the Austrian state came close to the brink of collapse. Thus the new young emperor of Franz Joseph I had to call for Russian help in the name of the Holy Alliance. Tsar Nicholas I answered, and sent a 200,000 men strong army with 80,000 auxiliary forces. Finally, the joint army of Russian and Austrian forces defeated the Hungarian forces. After the restoration of Habsburg power, Hungary was placed under brutal martial law. The anniversary of the revolution's outbreak, the 15th of March, is one of Hungary's three national holidays. Hungary before the revolution. The Kingdom of Hungary had always maintained a separate parliament, the Diet of Hungary, even after the Austrian Empire was created in 1804. The administration and government of the Kingdom of Hungary remained largely untouched by the government structure of the overarching Austrian Empire. Hungary's central government structures remained well separated from the imperial government. The country was governed by the Council of Lieutenancy of Hungary, located in Pressburg and later in Pest, and by the Hungarian Royal Court, Chancellery in Vienna, ideological forerunners of extra-parliamentary radical youths, the Hungarian Jacobin Club. After the death of Joseph II, the Holy Roman Emperor, the enlightened reforms in the country ceased which outraged many reform-oriented francophone intellectuals, who were followers of new radical ideas based on French philosophy and enlightenment. Ignac Martinovics worked as a secret agent for the new Austrian Emperor Leopold II until 1792, in his Oratia pro Leopoldo II. He explicitly declares that only authority derived from a social contract should be recognized. He saw the aristocracy as the enemy of mankind, because they prevented people from becoming educated. In another of his works, Catechism of People and Citizens, he argued that citizens tend to oppose any repression and that sovereignty resides with the people. He also became a Freemason and was in favor of the adoption of a federal republic in Hungary. As a member of the Hungarian Jacobins, he was considered an idealistic forerunner of revolutionary thought by some, and an unscrupulous adventurer by others. He was in charge of stirring up a revolt against the nobility among the Hungarian serfs. For these subversive acts, Francis II, the Holy Roman Emperor, dismissed Martinovics and his boss, Ferenc Gotthardi, the former chief of the secret police. He was executed, together with six other prominent Jacobins, in May 1795. More than 42 members of the Republican Secret Society were arrested, including the poet Jano Spatsani and linguist Ferenc Kazanczy. Though the Hungarian Jacobin movement did not affect the policy of the Hungarian parliament and the parliamentary parties, it had strong ideological ties with the extra parliamentary forces. The radical youths and students like the poet Sandor Pitofi, the philosopher and historian Pal Vasveri and the novel writer Mor Jokai, who sparked the revolution in the Pilvax coffeehouse on 15 March 1848. Origins of Revolution The Diet of Hungary had not convened since 1811. The frequent diets held in the earlier part of the reign occupied themselves with little else but war subsidies. After 1811 they ceased to be summoned. In the latter years of Francis I, the dark shadow of Metternich's policy of stability fell across the kingdom, and the forces of reactionary absolutism were everywhere supreme. But beneath the surface a strong popular current was beginning to run in a contrary direction. Hungarian society, not unaffected by Western liberalism, but without any direct help from abroad, was preparing for the future emancipation. Writers, servants, poets, artists, noble and plebeian, layman and cleric, without any previous concert or obvious connection, 
were working towards that ideal of political liberty which was to unite all the Magyars. Miley Vorismati, Ferenc Kolksi, Ferenc Kazanjzi and his associates, to mention but a few of many great names, were, consciously or unconsciously, as the representatives of the Renaissance national literature, accomplishing a political mission, and the pens proved no less efficacious than the swords of their ancestors. In 1825, Emperor Francis II convened the Diet in response to growing concerns amongst the Hungarian nobility about taxes and the diminishing economy. After the Napoleonic Wars, this, and the reaction to the reforms of Joseph II, started what is known as the Reform Period. But the nobles still retained their privileges of paying no taxes and not giving the vote to the masses. The influential Hungarian politician Countess van Szechenyi recognized the need to bring the country the advances of the more developed West European countries, such as England. It was a direct attack upon the constitution which, to use the words of Istvan Szechenyi, first startled the nation out of its sickly drowsiness. In 1823, when the reactionary powers were considering joint action to suppress the revolution in Spain, the government, without consulting the Diet, imposed a war tax and called out the recruits. The county assemblies instantly protested against this illegal act, and Francis I was obliged, at the Diet of 1823, to repudiate the action of his ministers. But the estates felt that the maintenance of their liberties demanded more substantial guarantees than the dead letter of ancient laws. Setenyi, who had resided abroad and studied Western institutions, was the recognized leader of all those who wished to create a new Hungary out of the old. For years he and his friends educated public opinion by issuing innumerable pamphlets in which the new liberalism was eloquently expounded. In particular Szechenyi insisted that the people must not look exclusively to the government, or even to the diet, for the necessary reforms. Society itself must take the initiative by breaking down the barriers of class exclusiveness and reviving a healthy public spirit. The effect of this teaching was manifest at the Diet of 1832, when the liberals in the lower chamber had a large majority, prominent among whom were Ferenc Deacon Odom Buddy. In the upper house, however, the magnates united with the government to form a conservative party obstinately opposed to any project of reform, which frustrated all the efforts of the liberals. The alarm of the government at the power and popularity of the Liberal Party induced it. Soon after the accession of the new king, the Emperor Ferdinand I, to attempt to crush the reform movement by arresting and imprisoning the most active agitators among them, Louis Kossuth and Miklos Wesselini. But the nation was no longer to be cowed. The Diet of 1839 refused to proceed to business till the political prisoners had been released, and, while in the lower chamber the reforming majority was larger than ever, a Liberal Party was now also formed in the upper house under the leadership of Count Louis Bathyani and Baron Joseph E. O. T. V. O.'s. From 1000 AD up to 1844, Latin language was the official language of administration, legislation and schooling in Kingdom of Hungary. Two progressive measures of the highest importance were passed by this diet, one making Magyar the official language of Hungary, the other freeing the peasants' holdings from all feudal obligations. The results of the Diet of 1839 did not satisfy the advanced liberals. While the opposition of the government and of the upper house still further embittered the general discontent, the chief exponent of this temper was the Pesta Herlap, Hungary's first political newspaper, founded in 1841 by Kossuth, whose articles, advocating armed reprisals if necessary, inflamed the extremists but alienated Szechenyi, who openly attacked Kossuth's opinions. The polemic on both sides was violent but, as usual, the extreme views prevailed, and on the assembling of the Diet of 1843 Kossuth was more popular than ever, while the influence of Szechenyi had sensibly declined. The tone of this Diet was passionate, and the government was fiercely attacked for interfering with the elections. 
Fresh triumphs were won by the liberals. Magyar was now declared to be the language of the schools and the law courts as well as of the legislature. Mixed marriages were legalized, and official positions were thrown open to non-nobles. The interval between the Diet of 1843 and that of 1847 saw a complete disintegration and transformation of the various political parties. Secheny openly joined the government, while the moderate liberals separated from the extremists and formed a new party, the Centralists. Immediately before the elections, however, Deek succeeded in reuniting all the liberals on the common platform of the Ten Points responsible ministries, freedom of the press, popular representation, the reincorporation of Transylvania, right of public meeting, absolute religious liberty, the abolition of the state religion, universal equality before the law, universal and equal taxation, the abolition of the Aviticum, an obsolete and anomalous land tenure, the abolition of serfdom and bond services with state-financed compensation to the landlords. The ensuing parliamentary elections resulted in a complete victory of the progressives. All efforts to bring about an understanding between the government and the opposition were fruitless. Kossuth demanded not merely the redress of actual grievances, but a liberal reform which would make grievances impossible in the future. In the highest circles a dissolution of the Diet now seemed to be the sole remedy, but before it could be carried out, tidings of the February Revolution in Paris reached Pressburg on 1 March, and on 3 March Kossuth's motion for the appointment of an independent, responsible ministry was accepted by the Lowell House. The moderates, alarmed not so much by the motion itself as by its tone, again tried to intervene, but on 13 March the Vienna Revolution broke out, and the emperor, yielding to pressure or panic, appointed Count Louis Bathyani premier of the first Hungarian responsible ministry, which included Kossuth, Secheny and Deek. The long debate of reformers in the press count Secheny analyzed the reform system of Lajos Kossuth in the pamphlet of Kelleteni Acute P. written in 1841. According to Secheny, the economic, political and social reforms had to be installed slowly and very carefully so that Hungary avoided the violent reaction of the Habsburg dynasty which could lead to a tragic end. Secheny observed the expansion of Kossuth's ideas in the Hungarian society, who did not advocate for good relations with the Habsburg dynasty. Kossuth also ignored the role of aristocracy, and he detested social stratification. In contrast, Kossuth believed that the society could not be forced into a passive role by any reasons through the social changing. According to Kossuth, the wider social movements can't be continually excluded from the political life. Therefore, he supported democracy and he did not believe in almighty elites and government. In 1885, Kossuth named Secheny as a liberal elitist aristocrat, while he considered himself to be a democrat. Secheny was an isolationist politician, while according to Kossuth, strong relations and collaboration with international liberal and progressive movements were essential for the successive liberty. Secheny's economic policy was based on Anglo-Saxon free market principles. While Kossuth supported protective tariffs due to the weaker Hungarian industrial sector, Kossuth wanted to build a rapidly industrialized country in his vision, while Secheny wanted to preserve the traditionally strong agricultural sector as the main character of the economy. The bloodless revolution in Pest the crisis came from abroad, as Kossuth expected, and he used it to the full. On 3 March 1848, shortly after the news of the revolution in Paris had arrived, in a speech of surpassing power he demanded parliamentary government for Hungary and constitutional government for the rest of Austria. He appealed to the hope of the Habsburgs, our beloved Archduke Franz Joseph 
to perpetuate the ancient glory of the dynasty by meeting halfway the aspirations of a free people. He at once became the leader of the European Revolution, his speech was read aloud in the streets of Vienna to the mob by which Metternich was overthrown, and when a deputation from the Diet visited Vienna to receive the assent of Emperor Ferdinand to their petition it was Kossuth who received the chief ovation. The arrival of the news of the revolution in Paris, and Kossuth's German speech about freedom and human rights had whipped up the passions of Austrian crowd in Vienna on March 13, while Viennese masses celebrated Kossuth as their hero. Revolution broke out in Buda on 15 March. Kossuth traveled home immediately. The revolution started in the Pilvax Coffee Palace at Pest, which was a favorite meeting point of the young extra-parliamentary radical liberal intellectuals in the 1840s. On the morning of March 15, 1848, revolutionaries marched around the city of Pest, reading Sandor Pitofi's Nemzet of Dal and the Twelve Points to the crowd, declaring an end to all forms of censorship. They visited the printing presses of Landra and Herkenast and printed Pitofi's poem together with the demands. A mass demonstration was held in front of the newly built National Museum, after which the group left for the Buddha Chancellery on the other bank of the Danube. The bloodless mass demonstrations in Pesem Buddha forced the imperial governor to accept all twelve of their demands. Austria had its own problems with the revolution in Vienna that year, and it initially acknowledged Hungary's government. Therefore, the governor-general's offices, acting in the name of the king, appointed Hungary's new parliament with Lajos Bathyani as its first prime minister. The Austrian monarchy also made other concessions to subdue the Vienna masses. On 13 March 1848, Prince Clemens von Metternich was made to resign his position as the Austrian government's chancellor. He then fled to London for his own safety.